this is John Reed with uh, Miko York, and we're having a extended conversation about BI disruption, and we're trying not to get into too much trouble, but we'll see. <laughs> we're uh, only, it's just the beginning. Just the beginning. <laughs> Uh, so now I want to move into a blog post you wrote about sort of trends for the year that got some attention, sparked some debate. And one of the things that really jumped out at me um, in that post was you still referred to these BI failure rates, extremely oh, high. Yeah. Um, 75%, I think. Straight or? from Gartner, 7 out of 10 scheduled to increase in 2017. So why is that? Well, so there's Gartner, and I think I, it's funny because, John, when I started doing this, you know all I did was fix projects. Right. <laughs> I went from delivering to fixing projects, and Gartner, I didn't get a whiff of this Gartner. Triage, basically. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So long story short is the they're citing a few main problems, but like some of the main problems they're saying is there's a lack of ownership and a lack of engagement. Mm. I pointed out five areas. The first one was communication. Right. You see this, and I don't mean, hopefully, this is not where trouble starts. I think offshoring communication is over. Yeah. It is, it is so necessary now to engage because of social mm. media with your users. I think that ship has sailed. I also told people the second thing killing them is UI. IT does not right. have a UI bone in its body. Right. And for whatever reason, they don't seem to realize that because of Steve Jobs, ugly things do not get used. Right. BI output is chronically ugly. Right. <laughs> Okay, so it's a problem. And if my company doesn't give me something pretty decent, I might download something that has some of the features. Well, think about it. You got to go present to the CFO. Right. It's your job. Right. What? You know. So it it becomes a thing of, well, I I have to present this. I don't want to go present this ugly looking, (laughs) you know. But you don't you don't know how to fix it. So your point of view, based on working with customers, is that you would measure product success. You said by the level of user adoption. That's and, my only KPI. And you think that's your only KPI, and you think that will reduce project failure if, if Yes, user- so what, okay, so I'm glad you brought, I'm sorry, so I should take a circle around. When we do our teachings, we teach people that as a delivery team, you have one KPI, that's user adoption. Everything you do in the project is tied to that. Now, in terms of what I mean by that, let's talk about, for instance, if you're thinking about user adoption, are you gonna deliver a slow, ugly looking report? Probably not. Right. If you're thinking about user adoption, are you going to deliver something today without mobile capability? Probably right. not. If you're thinking about user adoption, are you going to deliver something that provides no insight or value? Probably not. So I think the focus, again, is that IT, and I hate to keep saying IT, they don't have a KPI and understand that no matter what you do, the 12, 13, 15 months, if people don't use your system, you failed. And that hasn't been driven down. Gartner has been trying to feed it to people, but they're not getting it. And I think that's why these projects are failing. People live in a silo, and a lot of times the guy building has no clue why he's building this. Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand that this report is tied to the boardroom conversation. So does that tie back into your design thinking point as far as that if you you typically exclude users from the design process, then the engagement's not likely to happen, right? It's over. There's nothing, and the problem is that even if you include them, a lot of times they make the process so complex the users get turned off. I've seen it happen a million times. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. the user comes and is excited. I need, you know, three reports with this, this analysis. Then they sit on and say, oh, wonderful. Okay, Um, based on our methodology, we'll have this report out nine months. We'll have this one. And the user is like, you understand I have a meeting next week. Right. Yeah, well, once we get it out the door, then we'll go through. Users don't want to hear it anymore. It, it's that story, as I told you, the long-winded projects are dead. It's that ship, I agree with Dennis, has sailed. So I think there, there needs to be a reframe of thinking, whether it's design thinking, even agile. There just needs to be a reframe of thinking. So believe it or not, based on our research, 80% of organizations are still doing waterfall. Mm-hmm. They're still living off of <laughs> the business users are going, okay, I didn't say anything in two weeks. I'm going to give you one more week. And then they're gone. One thing you and I sort of share is a bit of a impatience, I always say, with vendor hype. And yet I did notice that on your predictions for the year, you did say that a few thing hyping concepts are here to stay, like cloud and mobile and in-memory, big data. Like, uh, so you, you buy into that? Is that because you buy no. into vendor hype or is it because, is that what you're hearing from your customers? or From C-levels. 
So okay. I, I don't buy into hype. I think obviously we're more on the grow and we see the behind the scenes. But I cannot tell you, I went into three big organizations, huge, right? So Fortune 20, and I've had conversations like this. Can somebody tell our CIO that big data has been here? Can somebody tell our CIO that cloud is not the solution? I mean, I cannot sit at a conversation with, with, with someone without hearing two to three of those words. Mm -hmm. the, the hype is there. I mean, I, mm -hmm. will it last? I think mm -hmm. cloud has some opportunities. Big data has been here. I don't get it. Do you? What's it's been here? I Zettabytes, mean, nanobytes, petabytes. I mean, right. I, it's been here. I, well, it just seems to me that so many companies continue to struggle with the data they already have. That right. <laughs> you know, I keep waiting for a company that is sophisticated enough to actually use the insights they can derive from that. Well, I had. I'm glad you brought up when I brought up big data with a customer. The customer said to me, "I can't even figure out the small data." Right. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. what's the point? So you're saying that some of those things are actually coming from C level, not so much from CIO, but from other Oh yeah. C they're who drinking are then kind the of juice. Pounding their CIOs saying get with the program and That's right. The the, yeah. the juice is being drunk on a top level and you have an IT who is struggling with a basic project saying no, we have to do cloud. No, you know, it, it's again, it's a lot, you know, because they don't, they haven't even figured out. Because you said, what do we do with what we already have? So there's a lot of hype coming from the top of people saying, like I had um, one company say, this is the year of the cloud. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Right. You just tell your group, it's the CIO says it's the year of the cloud. Hmm. Somebody sold it. The cloud is not all the time, but it, there are issues with the cloud. Oh, <laughs> my